Hi, welcome to a video on Why Cycling Weekly are lunatics. Just listen to this like minute, 30 second rant from them and I'm going to leave my thoughts because it is stupid. It's even. And so with the support that he's had from Team Ineos, to what extent did almost um, this supporter sort of buy the record, um, if you could put it in that way? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. It's, it's a tough one to answer, and you've got to look at it from kind of multiple different viewpoints, I think. From one point of view, his power was definitely down compared to previous attempts. But you've also got to remember that holding between 330 and 350 watts over an hour is still incredibly hard. Maybe what this really shows is that there's still a lot of potential within the hour record to make some significant gains. I think Dan Bingham has shown what happens when you have an expert mind in aerodynamics taking on something of this scale. Pair that with the power of someone who can ride at 400, 450 watts. And I think that's when you'll see an incredible jump forward in what's possible. And I think potentially up till now, we just haven't had the perfect recipe or someone really extract as much as they really could do. Yeah, I think... Um... Right. Stupidest comments ever. First of all, his name is Dan Bigham, not Bingham. I don't know why people get this confused. There's no N. Um, now, what you might say, Charlie, okay, what, what part did you disagree? Okay, so, was it bought? Well, it's not like Victor Campanance did his on a shoestring and, you know, whatever. Okay, fine, Dowsett did, but he didn't break it. Wiggins didn't. He had a massive budget. So, everyone has a massive budget. So, buying it, I know you've got to get clickbaits, but come on, this is just terrible journalism. So, no, he didn't buy it because everyone buys it. Like, you know, if I go down to the local track and try an hour record, which Dan Bigham did, he got like 47k an hour. He's like, that's just stupid. Okay, so the first thing is, he didn't buy it. He just had support from all the sponsors. No one does the hour record with no money, so that's a stupid comment. But the stupidest comment, the stupidest comment, is like the lack of understanding of CDA and power. It's like this thing of just, oh, well, if you just got Wiggins as error as Dan Bigham, it's like, well, yes, but you can't. Not all humans are made equally. You cannot get some people to be as aerodynamic as others. So it doesn't matter how much you try, you're not going to do it. And this regard that Campanus and everyone else was just, you know, you know, doing no marginal gains or none of this, you know, they're just whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. Everyone was as optimised as possible. Do you think they went to the wind tunnel and said, could make you more aero, but actually no. It's like, well, obviously not. So they obviously are trying to get them as aero as possible. The point is this. If you've ever ridden time trial bike, which I assume these two donkeys probably have not, you would realise that you can't do the same power in a really, really aggressive position when your hip angle is tight as, as you can when you're upright from 99% of people. So Dan Bigham's position, the point is, is it makes sense because for him, he can get error enough. CDA quoted 0.15, which is like so error as a joke. Remco, people think, is like 0.17. So more error than Remco. And he's a lot bigger. But the point is, is that for him, he can get so error and do the power. Like, you can't get these magical riders doing 400, 450 watts in that position. Like, Wout Van Aert will never be as error as Dan Biggin. He will do more watts than Dan Biggin, but he will never be more error. And people don't seem to understand this, is that, like, you can't just make people error and expect them to have the same power. Like, your shoulders determine how error you're going to be. You expect him to have shoulder surgery? Like, you just don't seem to understand it. I get that point. The point is, if all this, the R&D that Dan Bigham had is done, which obviously is high level, then, and someone else uses that, i.e. Ghana next year, they'll go very far. Yeah, agree. But don't talk about the power. His power is the best. His power to CDA is the best. That's what the hour record is. And I think I fell into this trap thinking, oh, yeah, but it's, like, you know, it's not a physiologically impressive performance. Like, well, you know, it is. Because ultimately, he's doing it in a ridiculous position. So his CDA is that low. Like, you know, there's no point saying, oh, well, you know, I could do 450 watts if I was sat upright. It's like, yeah, but that's not the challenge, is it? The challenge is in an hour max power. It's how fast you can go. And that's why he's good at it. Because you can do it. And these people really seem to sort of denigrate the record by saying, oh, well, it's only because he's like, yeah, error. It's like, well, no, no, no. Like, he is a very good athlete because you can't do it all. Like, do you think he never, like, does any core work? Do you think he never does any, like, you know, flexibility work so he can do power in that position? And he just rocks up and goes, no, this is error. I'll just hop on. Like, obviously he does. Like, this is just, it's just, it just seems to go 
beyond people thinking the only thing in cycling matters is what. Well, if that was true, you know, you'd have a complete different people winning time trials. It's like, people need to be aero. And like, yeah, these people need to grow up and realise that it was an, a very impressive hour record. He put 500 metres into Campanuts. That is very big. Like, 500 metres is, is huge. And um, Campanuts had Burt Blocken. Do you know who Burt Blocken works for now? Yumbo. He sorts all the error out. Like, he had serious stuff. He went to altitude for like eight weeks in Namibia. Like, it was a serious record from Campanuts. And I think people underestimate Campanuts' record. And they'll underestimate this one. But when you think that Wiggins, okay, he did have the air density, which was like, you know, milk or something stupid. Like, it was just the worst day ever. But still, like, he did that many watts and still couldn't beat him. That shows, like, you know, those uh, records were very impressive. Like, it wasn't like he could just roll up and, like, obviously, you know, he got the record. But he has been subsequently by two people. Like, it's pretty impressive. So, yeah, that's my run over. They're just, they're just deluded. They just don't understand cycling. They understand, like, you know, riding to the calf or, like, well, that's rude. They just don't really understand it, like, properly. Because, like, you can't call an hour record bought. And you can't say, oh, well, when we just put a bloke doing 450, that error is like, well, find me a bloke that error does 450 for an hour. Because I reckon zero. The only one is Remco could do like close to 380 maybe. And he's error. But still, you know, it's also on the track. Last comment on the track. People don't seem to understand on the track. It's really hard to do power because you're not pedaling the whole way. Right. Like you get pushed round in certain points. So doing... 350 on the track is more impressive than it is on a time trial bike if that makes sense it's really hard to like illustrate but people do less power on track so again stupid comment um but anyway that's all my thoughts let me know what you think below but i just think it's a very disrespectful video and if i was damn big i would be well you i wouldn't really care to be honest because you'd be like got the hour record but I just think it's a bit disrespectful like have some respect man you've been everyone.